Cord, welcome to the Breakfast Nook here on Maggie Klein. I'm here today with my special guest Tony of Tony's Bin Sales on the Facebook group Low Grade Comics, and he sells every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this is Tony. How are you, Tony? I'm great. How are you? Well, give me a tagline. Why should I do business with you? Well, um, I think uh, probably the uh, the biggest draw for me has been my consistency because I have a, a sale pretty much every week um, and I'm willing to hold comics uh, for people over a period of time, particularly people that I've worked with before. So it's not, you know, something where you uh, end up having to, to do a sale, um, you know, you, you purchase a couple of books and then you realize, okay, I spent you know, $8 buying three comic books and now I got to pay $8 in shipping, right? Because the the shipping is is just a thing, right? Somebody's got to pay for it. Um, and I do two things. One is if you buy 25 <clears throat> comic books or more, I'll pay for shipping as long as you're in the uh, continental US or the uh, US postal system area. And I will also accumulate books in a hold pile as long as, you know, people are, are maintaining regular, um, interaction with me over a period of time and uh and if it takes three weeks two months or whatever you know to accumulate 25 comics for free shipping that's fine uh, i'm a patient guy i don't do this for a living so um that works out really well for a lot of people you can say come in and just grab one book and you know see you next week you know that kind of a thing yeah, because that's how we do business with each other. I mean, I can honestly vouch that you have held comics for me for long periods of time, too, sometimes up to six months. And then you combine them all together. And then you and I say, I'll pay you here. We pay. And that afternoon, I see a shipping label and a picture of the box shipped. We've yeah, I try to get try to get the stuff out as quickly as possible. At that point, once it's been paid for, I feel like it's your comics and not mine. So the faster I can get you, you know, the invoice and get it out uh, or the uh, tracking uh, information and get it in the mail, the better. Yeah. I mean, it's a very simple business. It's a great and it's easy to find. I'll, I'll include a link to Tony's Facebook um, group thing that he maintains where he posts his links to his sales. He's going to have one this Friday on low grade comics on the Facebook group. So do check that out. But Tony, we got to talk about some football now because all I mean, right. Our conversations go into football, and you're you you always have football on the brain. I do, I do. It's that time of year, and and so we're both. I'm a Browns fan, as you know, and I'm not. Really I, and you're a Bengals fan, and it's kind of like we commiserate together because we're just so terrible. But this year, the AFC East is like, if if we had to go to the playoffs right now, would be everyone in the AFC East. All four, all four teams. Yep. Uh, that would be spectacular to see. I, I don't think it's going to finish up that way, but damn, uh, I don't think there's a, uh, I don't think there's a team in the NFL that wants to play any any of the any of the AFC teams that uh, that we're carrying around in our division. And it's cutthroat. I mean, you know, we got to beat we got to beat the Steelers still. I mean, we still have one Steeler game left. We beat the Bengals, so we're not too worried about you guys. But uh, yeah, Joe Burrow with one leg is way different than Joe Burrow with two legs. Yeah, that's true. Actually, I don't, know. I, I don't know actually most of the players and stuff like that. I actually, I don't really pay that much attention to football other than I watch the scores and then I read the highlights afterwards. Yeah. Uh, I've been doing fantasy football for several years and that makes a huge difference in, you know, oh. having a better appreciation of the players from other teams. And um, I was always, you know, I'll root for my team, but I don't know who the hell the left tackle is or the, you know, the, the defensive back or whatever. But once you start, uh, you know, playing fantasy, then you, you at least know the offensive players on all the other teams. Um, so it's really a kind of a nice way to introduce yourself to, especially when your team sucks and you've got nothing going for you, you can at least, you know, root for your favorite players or, you know, players on your fantasy team. Yeah. No, I don't, we try to start a fantasy football league where I work, but it didn't work out. So I didn't play fantasy football this year, 
but I used to play fantasy football all the time. And I love it because it does, you, you start, you start paying attention to who's the best defense. You're always looking for that special bargain on, on, on the free agent market that you can, that you can get that extra five points out of. And I got to say, if you had the Browns defense last oh, week, yeah. you got two, five full points from a defense <laughs> for no points on them. Yeah. They, uh, they, they have an elite defense at this point. Uh, that's the, that seems to be the one defense that the Bengals cannot figure out. Um, they, they beat them once last year. And I think that's the first time in, I don't know, three years, there've been a, you know, a lot of extenuating circumstances two years ago, the last game of the year didn't mean anything. So they didn't play their starters. Burrow was hurt this year, but it, you know, it's just one of those, one of those teams that just seems to match up very unfavorably with our offense. Um, and uh, unfortunately, um, Baltimore has been more like that the last couple of years. And frankly, still, so it's like all, all the teams in the AFC are made to play the Bengals hard um, by what, by virtue of how good their defenses are. It's really something. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, the 49ers though, man, that team looked like they were going to be unstoppable and then they met the Browns and that was the end of it. Yeah. That was uh, really crazy that they lost three games in a row. I had them, uh, I had them kind of cruise into the Super Bowl and then, uh, you know, you're going to lose. Right. I mean, the, the Browns played them well and they had a chance at the end that they didn't, you know, they didn't make a you know, field goal or something. And uh, and then they they either lost the week before or the week after. And it's just like, what the hell's going on? And then they're on a two game losing streak. They play the Bengals. The Bengals, you know, beat them pretty handily. Um, but that's that's weird. Uh, they're just too good a team for that. So I have a feeling they're going to come out of the bye and tear up some teams really bad. Yeah. So, I mean, anyways, love talk. So this is like half our conversations when we're talking on Facebook, because we do talk back and forth on Facebook. Half the time it's like, oh, the Browns won. Sorry about those Bengals losses. <laughs> you know, after the Browns won, I kind of rubbed it in a little bit and gave him a hard time about it. But this is part of the fun of being a dealer with Tony is because Tony, he's personal. He will – he's very friendly and he, he doesn't mind chit chatting and he, you can talk to him about pretty much anything that interests him. I mean, Tony, other than comics, and I mean, your comic knowledge is superb. I mean, you have, you have a pedigree that makes me, I mean, because I've been picking up all your uncle Scrooge and all your Don, Disney duck Disney books that you've been replacing slowly and surely in the sales. But there was a big, there was a big one that I got a big pile of them. And so I was really happy about that. And also I think I cleaned you out of Superboy. Yeah, I got got some more to show you. I still have to go through them and figure out which ones I need for my collection. I got a great deal on some um, some early Scrooges and some early Walt Disney comics and stories. Some of them were in fantastic condition, so I'll be uh, kind of sorting through whichever ones uh, I can't use for my collection. I'll, I'll I'll send your way to have a look at. All right, I appreciate that, and that's part of the fun. Is once you get to know Tony, Tony's very personable. He's very friendly, and. God, I'm sounding like I'm selling you as this. I'm trying to oversell you. <laughs> I mean, it's easy, right? You know, just try to try to make it as easy as possible. Keep it low key. Some comic book people are funny. Um, you know, sometimes they can be a little bit on the strange side, and, and you know that doesn't that doesn't bother me. But um, you got some sellers that are just I don't know. Um, it's it's like uh, you're doing them a favor by buying books from them, and you know I. I'm not doing this for a living. So, you know, it, for me, this is, you know, fun is building the relationships and helping people get the books that they're looking for, hopefully at a, a reasonable price. And I can then use that money to buy stuff for my collection. And, and it's a win-win for everybody, but you know, it, it's no good doing it if you don't enjoy working with the people. So what's in your collection? Um, I'm mostly a Marvel guy. Um, long, long term. Um, over the last couple of years, I've been expanding a little bit. Um, some of the DC keys, I, I, I really loved uh, Perez's New Teen Titans. Um, so I, I read those when I was uh, a teenager, and uh, so I've been you know, the first, you know, first fifty or hundred or whatever. Um, Green Lantern, um, uh, I like Green Lantern as well, and um, but most mostly, mostly it's Marvel. I'm like kind of light on Marvel, if you know. I purchased, but then again, I'm known for my odd purchases. You put up weird stuff like Uncle Scrooge, and I'm like, I'm on it, or like, <laughs> Superboy, I'm on it, and you're like, and you're like, 
And you're like, yep, I can sell Maggie all the weird stuff. And like anything Golden Age, I'm buying it because it's just Golden Age. I have a pile of Golden Age books that really $10 at most I could get if I try to flip it. It's a, that way lies madness for me because uh, I tend to be a completist. And if I start collecting Golden Age stuff, it just, I think I would drive myself absolutely crazy. Um because that stuff is just so hard to find and it's so expensive and I love it when I get it and I love looking at it, but I try not to keep it. <laughs> yeah. And so I've been buying up your golden age stuff. I mean, I, I mean, like I did drop like $110 on a, a Superboy, which was just, yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, I got a ton of Neil, of Neil Adam covers in that Superboy pile. It was just, I was doing a video about it the other day and I was like, wow. man, I made off with some Neil Adams covers here. It's like, you love those covers. Love them. I mean, some of them were okay, but there were just some that just were like, this is Neil Adams doing. Like, he had one more Superboy dropping down, and it was just, it was amazing. So, it was like, and you get to look at them, too, and you go, yeah. So, how do you get your comics? Um, So, I collected as a kid. Um, I collected through about, I'll say about 1985, I think, is when I, I stopped, the year I graduated from high school. And, um, you know, at that point, it just... I wasn't enjoying it like I, you know, like I used to and, you know, had moved on to other things and then picked it up later. Um, but it's mostly shows, um, auctions, local auctions. Um, I don't care so much for online auctions. Um, that's one of the reasons why I don't. I think my bin sales are attractive to people because as a buyer, I don't like to go to an online auction, put bids in on six or seven comic books. And then at the end of the night, I end up with two and, you know, then you got to pay shipping for them. And, you know, do I, then I have to make the decision. Do I, you know, jump up more than uh, what I wanted to pay to make it worth, you know, buying eight or 10. And it's just, I, I'd much rather do a bin sale where I know I have it if I have it, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, and I know what the price is and, you know, I can, I can rectify that in my head. And uh, I think other people will feel the same way. I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm eventually going to, so what I'm doing is I'm pulling out the ones I want to keep for my collection. And then I'm taking the ones that I'm not going to keep that I bought off of you. I'm going to read them and then, and then sell them off to somewhere else. Now yeah. where I'll have like a hundred comics for like a hundred dollars, hundred dollars ship, one long box of comics, $100, hundred dollars ship. That's a that's an expensive way to, to get those out of there. Those long boxes or those big boxes are <laughs> holy crap. Uh, shipping is incredible. That's that's one of the things that I, I caution. I, I do get a lot of people that ask me for advice on uh, on sales and um, understanding the shipping costs is like one of the number one things um, because those prices are extravagant and they and they can fluctuate. Um, the last couple of years, I think the USPS has uh, jacked up prices heading into the holidays. So, you know, if you're expecting, oh, it's going to be this much or whatever, it might be, you know, a buck or two more than what you thought it was. And, you know, just, uh, eh. yeah. So just make sure that you, you got your head wrapped around those costs because that's, that's crazy. Because I used, to, I used to be a dealer back in, I owned a comic book shop and I actually had a comic book where I would go to shows with big piles of comic books, basically built for my collection mm -hmm. and all the ones that I was trying to get rid of. And then I would sell them off and get some money for them. Good way to do it. I did it all once. So I couldn't get a job when I was living in Holland. So I, the embassy was like, we're not going to hire you. You're too, you know, we fired you already. You get out. <laughs> so my parents got me a job hustling selling comic books on military bases all across germany so i learned how to hustle comic book selling and so but those days are long gone now yeah and you know you gotta like it too if uh you know there's some certain times of your life where doing stuff like that is fun and other times it ends up being more of a, a chore um right now this is something i enjoy if it gets to the point where i don't enjoy it anymore i'll move on to something else yeah no it's been great it was great talking with you. Um, I hope you had a good conversation. We we got a little touch. Do you want to give us a preview of tomorrow's sale? Um, yeah, I'm actually kind of struggling to kind of throw things together at the last minute. Um, I've been super busy the last couple of couple of weeks doing other stuff. Um, so it's just a mishmash of uh, 
um, mostly Bronze Age stuff, a lot of $3 um, items. Uh, coming up in, sometime in the near future, um, I've got um, a bunch of uh, good Batman and detective comics, um, which are, you know, tend to be a little harder to come by. Um, I've got some some Bronze Age Spider-Mans, you know, low grade. Um, I got a couple of long boxes of uh, stuff recently from a couple of different sales. Um, some of it's Golden Age stuff, so you might be interested in some of that. Um, you know, some of the old four color stuff and, um, you know, just, just a little bit of everything. Um, it, yeah. That's part of this is just, you know, just digging through it. I really don't collect the four color stuff because I'm just not as much of a fan of it. Any Uncle Scrooge going to be in this week? Um, I, I was going to let you take a look at the ones uh, that I am not selling or that I am not keeping to see what you wanted. And then if you didn't want any, I've got like two or three other people that are also interested in Scrooges. So um, I would shop them to them as well. And then whatever's left will end up going into uh, the general sale. So that's the nice thing about having, you know, regular relationships with, with people, you know what they like. So sometimes I'll get something. I'm like, well, I know Tom's going to like this or, you know, Maggie will want that or, you know, whatever. And, um, and if they don't, somebody else will. But uh, it makes for an easy sale. Yeah, I'm looking forward to because I'm building. I'm just building, buying up all your Uncle Scrooge pieces, and then I'm picking the 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 stories I like, and then trying to like then backtrace it to its origin. So then, and then, and then get you know because like a lot of them are reprints of of. So understand Uncle Scrooge collecting. Uncle Scrooge collecting. Carl Barks is considered like the foremost duck artist that existed there were other dark artists that existed during that time period and they're not as well sung in the collecting world and, and it's really cool when you get your hands on some old donald ducks and old uncle scrooges and more old old walt disney comics you see the different styles and stuff like that but then then in the 80s gladstone comics took over uncle scrooge comics and then came out came out i could do a whole youtube video on this then came out came out um they came out with uncle scrooge john duck walt disney comics and and they started publishing and for uncle scrooge they started using donna rossa now donna rossa is very famous however he's not famous in america it, i was what i was watching his videos about all the all, all the cons he's doing in europe and it's just like insane yeah i, I when i was a kid my first couple of comic books were were duck comics and and rasa did them um so that was kind of my first introduction but he was close enough to barks that at that age i couldn't tell the difference so um it wasn't until you know later but like his stuff too just nice quality you know it's clean it's just clean good and, and it's cool to see some of the old duck artists because they do donald duck they, how they take donald duck they make him more mischievous and it's just interesting to read them and so like what it is is when you buy one duck if it's a reprint, then you can go find the original and then buy the original if you like yeah. this. And collect the stories I like from reading the Gladstone reprints when I was a kid. And I think the Gladstone ones, I think when they moved it to that uh, publisher, I think they kept, they kept the numbering system. So, um, you know, they're up in the 300s or whatever. So that I always I'm always grateful, grateful to the publishers that do that. So they don't start back over on number one again. Hello, DC. Um, you know, where you it feels like you're starting over and you've got 16 titles named Superman. And I've got number three. Well, which title? What year did it come from? You know, whatever. I just uh, I hate that. I hear you. But that's the nice thing. So, I mean, if you're into duck collecting, which I'm hugely into, I should make a YouTube video about collect Uncle Scro uh, how to collect Uncle Scrooge comics. I'm a big, you know, I'm. What, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to Berlin for a for 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 a vacation for a three month vacation. Nice, because I can work in Europe with my job. My job's remote, so I can work anywhere. And I have a coworker in France right now. And my boss is like, "Yeah, you can go work in Berlin for three months. I don't care." And I'm even going to go to Ukraine to see my Ukrainian coworker that I talk to every day and see you know all anyways so so i was thinking about taking the donald duck comics with me and the old all the old all the old duck comics that i don't want and taking yeah. them to europe and selling them there because that might be oh yeah there. yeah i think that i think that stuff goes really well over there i've never tried it myself but um you know it's, it seems like you know the the uk stuff that comes over here sells really well so i don't know why it wouldn't be the reverse yeah, because I mean, could you imagine if you got an original Donna Rossa? I had the, I got the first Donna Rossa ever printed, and I just bought it at because it looked cool. 
Yeah, I think that would be fantastic. Uh, you'd let me know how that turns out. It, that would be uh, that'd be interesting. Uh, an interesting marketing switch. Yeah. So who who do the Browns got this week? Um, let me look up real quick. <laughs> I can't remember. Bengals got the Texans. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. I don't think C.J. Stroud is all that. And the Browns, and the Browns have, and I don't think it's a good one for the Browns. Browns have a Colts tough Raven. Game. Isn't it the Ravens? Yep, the Ravens. Oh, I cannot wait to see this game. Let's see, two great defenses. What, what's your call on this one? Ravens. Oh, I hope you're wrong, but. I was talking with some of Browns my friends. To win. I mean, I want the Browns to win, but the Ravens is just – it's going to be one of the most brutal defensive games wow. of the year. There might be 12 points scored between the two teams. Yeah. If you have Browns and, and Ravens defense right now, you would be sitting on some serious points come next week. Come this Yeah, week. Them. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I kind of. I was telling my friends that I think I think we win either way because we're currently in the basement of our division um, with a five and four record. Um, so if the Ravens win, I think uh, in in of course if, if we can beat the Texans, um, we'll get out of the basement. And if uh, the Browns beat the Ravens, well, we're only uh, one game out instead of two, I think. Um, so you know, just that much closer to maybe taking the taking the title back. <laughs> It's gonna be it's gonna be a brutal slug out in the AFC East. Yeah, this is the year. This is the year that the AFC East finally just is brutal. I mean, it, it, you don't want to face you know you don't want to face any team in the AFC East right now. They're all good. Yeah, there isn't a team in the rest of the NFL that uh, that I'm particularly concerned about. Even Kansas City, um, you know, we've been there, done that. But uh, playing the Ravens, the Browns, and the Steelers, never have a good feeling going into that that it's going to be uh, that it's going to be a win, or that it's going to be an easy game. I don't, you know, I don't care who the quarterbacks are. If you got um, Watson or what's a, the backup, um, some other W name, um, even uh, the Ravens, uh, the backup uh, for them played in um, you know, the the playoff game last year, and they damn near beat us. So. It's uh, it's it's tough. It's a tough slog. Yeah, it's gonna be a fight. Yeah. We'll see. We'll 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 message each other with condolences on Sunday. Yeah, that'd be great. We'll what's your uh, what's your call? Gonna give point? you a hard time. <laughs> we're we'll see. We're nine nine games in, so we're about a halfway point of the season at this point. Who do you think's going to the Super Bowl? I can't tell. It's just so. I want to say the Steelers. Steelers. Oh God. And I don't know. I haven't been paying attention to the NFC, so I don't know. <laughs> I I mean, I used to be a diehard Commanders fan, but with the whole name thing and the hating of Daniel Schneider, I grew to hate that team after I moved away from DC. That Daniel Snyder was a piece of work. Uh, just he was horrible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I try not to, to judge people by what I read in the paper, but just like literally by every single account, the man was a man was a just a scummy individual. Yes, he was, and and he and his the whole name change thing. I wanted the name change. I read an article in CNN about how the name was racist and how it made them feel as people, and it was a very moving article, and it got me to realize, you know what the name needs to change. And after that, I stopped being a fan. And then I moved to Cle Cleveland and fell in love with the Browns, saw Browns Redskin game, uh, Red, excuse me, commanders game. And, and then, and then was still rooting for the commanders. But then after that, I was a diehard Browns fan. It's a good, uh, good quality um, team. And uh, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of their owner, but uh, you know, it's a good organization. It's got great fans and, and of course, it's named after one of the greatest football minds of all time. Yeah, Paul Brown. Yeah, it, 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 it it's a stoic franchise. I mean, and I as much as I want to see the Ravens lose, because like in the AFC, in the AFC, everyone hates the Steelers. Yeah, you're either a Steelers think... fan or you hate the Steelers. You want to see the Steelers lose. <laughs> it's a good it's a good weekend when the Steelers lose. You're like, yes, they lost. I agree. 
one of the guys that I work with is a Steelers fan. And uh, it's just, we, we have a tough relationship. We, uh, we, we try to respect each other's choices, but uh, damn. Steeler fans are the worst. <laughs> it's the point where my friends and I don't even want to go to the Steelers games in Cincinnati just because it's like, I don't know. Ugh. One of the worst nights that I can ever remember of my life was uh, that game they lost uh, to the Steelers in the in the postseason. You know, the whole the Vontez perfect and the and the, the fumble and uh, you know Pac Man Jones. You know, getting into it with Joey Porter in the middle of the field. What Joey Porter was doing in the middle of the field, I have no idea. It's just uh, it was awful. It was it was what it was. That was I I I like the Bengals. You know I like the Bengals because they're an Ohio team, and you know you got to root for the Ohio teams. But it, at, the, at the end of the day, though, man, it's the Browns that all that matters in the AFC East. And <laughs> to be a Browns fan is like to learn to be very disappointed. Yeah, it's a little like the Cubs. Uh, you know, for baseball, I think you know you got the. You you put up with it if you're if you're a fan after all these years of of some of the miserableness that they went through and and I can say this as a Bengals fan because we've had our miserable decades as well you know you that's how you know you're a true fan yeah I'm a Browns fan because I just love the Browns and I love Cleveland and and but I like the Bengals but in the end I want the Browns to win so so yeah this weekend's going to be an interesting football matchup all right. So one last one last question. So how does the bin work? Um, so the way I do it is um, I put a um, pre-sale notification out that indicates, hey, this is coming at eight o'clock um, or East, uh, I'll specify which time zone. It's usually eight o'clock Eastern time um, and a link to a Dropbox file that has images of the comics that I'm going to be selling. So you kind of can look in advance and see, yeah, is this the kind of stuff I want or I'm not going to waste my time. Um, and uh, then I post them individually, one um, one comic image at a time. So the first one that goes out, Superman 355, this is the condition. Um, here's any, you know, a, a description of any defects, you know, it's got water damage on the spine or, you know, whatever. And, uh, and it's, two dollars um and then if you want it at that point you put something you comment on it and the first person to say bin or i'll take it or mine or you know whatever um gets it and then i'll go on you know I'll, after i post one i'll go on to the next one the next one and i do about a hundred a little over a hundred in every sale um and then the next day um I'll start to go back and kind of collate who got which comics and send a Facebook message that says, Hey, I got you getting, you know, these six comic books or, or whatever. And, um, you know, how do you want to do this? You want me to put them in the hold pile for you? Do you want me to send them? It'll be this much shipping. And, uh, and we kind of go from there. So, um, hopefully it's pretty easy. Usually once you've done it once it's no problem. Um, sometimes, yeah, I think the only problem that I've had is, um, sometimes Facebook, can be a little bit glitchy on these sales and trying to, you know, refresh to get the new images as they come up, um, depending on what's going on on Facebook land that night uh, can be a little iffy or, um, you know, if you're on a phone or a laptop, the experience can maybe differ a little bit, but um, it's been pretty consistent the last couple of months. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I don't have any more problems like I did a while ago, but uh, it seems like it's been pretty good. Not too many complaints about problems. All right. So uh, we have to end the interview now. So it was nice talking with you. Yeah. Great talking to you, Maggie. I had a good time.